Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be tackling a practice problem set that relates to our chapter on social stratification. Let's go ahead and get started with problem number one. Problem number one says, which of the following best describes the component of socioeconomic status attributable to direct individual efforts? When we started our lecture, we talked about social stratification and we said that this is based on socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status depends on ascribed status and achieved status. Now, ascribed status, this is involuntary and it derives from clearly identifiable characteristics like age, gender, skin color, etc. On the other hand, achieved status is acquired through direct individual uh, efforts. And so when this problem is asking us which component of socioeconomic status is attributable to direct individual efforts, it's going to be achieved status, which makes the correct answer for one, D. Let's go ahead and move into problem two. This one says, which of the following displays a correct association? A says high social networking and low social capital. B says high social mobility and low social capital. C says low social class and low social capital, and D says low social networking and high social capital. So let's define really quickly social capital and social mobility, just to remind ourselves. Social capital is the investment people make in their society in return for economic or collective rewards. Social networks, either situational or positional, are one of the most powerful forms of social capital, and it can be achieved through establishing strong and weak social ties. Now, social mobility allows one to acquire, say, higher level employment opportunities by achieving required credentials and experience. And social mobility can either occur in a positive upward direction or a negative downward direction, depending on if one is promoted or demoted in status. Now, keeping that in mind and looking back through some of these answers, low social class this may lead to low social capital. Members of the lower class, they often have a smaller number of weak ties in social networks, and therefore they have less opportunity to invest in society and reap its benefits. And that makes the correct answer here, C, low social class and low social capital. This is a correct association. If we look at the other answer choices, high social networking would lead to high social capital, not low. So this is incorrect. B says high social mobility and low social capital. Usually high social mobility and high social capital are more properly associated. And D says low social networking and high social capital. This is incorrect. Low social networking would result in low social capital. So A, B, and D are incorrect. The correct answer for two is going to be C. Let's go ahead and tackle three. Three says, which of the following concepts are least likely to coincide? A says, hazardous waste facilities and low-income neighborhoods. This is correct. We talked about how a lot of the facilities and factories that are undesirable usually end up being built in low-income neighborhoods because low-income neighborhoods don't have the economic or political power to stop such um buildings from taking over neighborhoods, if you will. C says tuberculosis and poor living conditions. This is likely to coincide. Low income neighborhoods, poor living conditions do result in an increase in spread of illnesses and diseases. C says environmental pollution and high minority populations. Minorities and um, disadvantaged groups do sometimes um, tend to live in low-income neighborhoods. And again, low-income neighborhoods tend to be hotspots for plants and factories that are undesirable. And those factories and plants usually cause a lot of pollution. Hence, environmental pollution and high minority populations, those two things can coincide. D says globalization and global equality. This is interesting. Globalization does not typically lead to global equality. Rather, globalization tends to create further global inequality. Now, in regards to that, then, the correct answer here 
is going to be D. This is least likely to coincide globalization and global equality. So three is D. And again, just to go over these answer choices in regards to environmental justice, higher numbers of hazardous waste facilities tend to be found in low income neighborhoods. That's choice A. Then poor living conditions tend to be associated with greater health problems, including tuberculosis, which is answer choice B. So those coincide as well. And then finally, environmental population uh, pollution is more prevalent in areas with minority populations, especially low income minority populations, which is choice C. So A, B, and C, the two things that are present all coincide in these three answer choices, but not for D. Hence why the correct answer for three is going to be D. Let's move on to problem four. Four says, which of the following trends is most likely false? A says mortality rates are increased in low income racial and ethnic minorities. B says life expectancy is decreased in high income groups. C says birth weights are decreased in children of low income women. And D says rates of lung cancer are increased in low income groups. Now, the statement that is most likely false is going to be B. Life expectancy is decreased in high income groups. This is not true. High income groups tend to have increased life expectancy rates, not decreased. Now, going through some of the other answer choices just to further prove why four is B, low income and uh, low income racial and ethnic minorities have higher mortality rates than high income groups. This is true. All right. A is true. So it's not most likely the false answer. Then for C, birth weights are decreased in children of low income women. Also true. Low income women do tend to have children with lower birth rates and, and having lower birth weights, um, usually leads to problems further down the line for those children. Then D says rates of lung cancer are increased in low income groups. Also true. Also true. Rates of various diseases, including lung cancer, are increased among low income groups. And so which of the following trends is most likely false? It's going to be B. Wonderful. Let's do five and six. These are both related here. Questions five and six refer to the scenario described below. Here's the scenario. A small town has 1,000 residents, including 500 men and 500 women. In this town, 20 of the men have prostate cancer. During a calendar year, 10 more men were diagnosed with prostate cancer. Assume none of the men are cured or die during the year. Fife asks, what is the prevalence of prostate cancer in this population at the end of the year? Now, prevalence is defined as the total number of cases divided by the total population during a period of time. Here, the period of time is defined as one point, the end of the year. At the end of the year, there are 30 total cases in a population of 1,000 individuals. So the prevalence is just going to be 30 divided by 1,000, which is going to be answer choice D. Six says, what is the incidence of prostate cancer in this population during the year? Incidence is defined as the total number of new cases divided by the at-risk population during a period of time. Here again, the period of time is going to be one year. There were 10 new cases in this year, and the at-risk population will be only the males who did not already have prostate cancer. The 20 men already diagnosed and the 500 women should not be included in the at-risk population. And so the incidence in this population is going to be 10 divided by 480. And that makes the correct answer for 6A. All right, let's move on to problem seven. Problem seven says a low income single mother works a part time job and lives in a small apartment in the city. 
When her children grow up, they take similar jobs and live in similar housing. This is an example of blank. Upward social mobility, downward social mobility, so social exclusion or social reproduction. So in this scenario, what's happening is that the children remain essentially in the same socioeconomic class as their mother. And so this indicates a lack of social mobility. This means we can go ahead and kind of eliminate A and B. This actually is more of an example of social rep reproduction in which social inequality, especially poverty, is passed from one generation to the next. And so this low income single mother passes down that socioeconomic class to her children who also become low income. And that means that this is an example of social reproduction. And the correct answer for seven is D. Eight says, which of the following is true with regard to relative poverty? A says individuals in relative poverty have incomes below the poverty line. B says individuals in relative poverty exhibit downward social mobility. C says individuals in relative poverty may be in the upper class. And D says individuals in relative poverty ex uh, exhibit upward social mobility. Relative poverty, if you remember from lecture, this is a comparative term. It describes being poorer than those in the surrounding population. Members of the upper class can live in quote unquote relative poverty compared to others in the neighborhood if they are not as well off as their neighbors. So the correct answer here is going to be C, individuals in relative poverty may be in the upper class. Relative poverty, by the way, this is not directly associated with upward or downward social mobility, hence why B and D are not the correct answer. As for A, again, individuals in relative poverty have incomes below the poverty line. That's not necessarily true for the definition of relative poverty. It could be individuals who make more than what the poverty line is. Why? Well, remember, relative poverty is when one is poor in comparison to a larger population. So if there was a millionaire living with a bunch of billionaires in the same neighborhood, the millionaire would be considered to be in relative poverty poverty. This is to contrast absolute poverty, which is when people do not have enough resources to acquire basic life necessities like shelter, food, clothing, and water. And that is why the correct answer here for eight, which asks about relative poverty, is C. Let's go ahead and move into the next problem. Nine says, in comparison to urban centers, suburbs tend to have blank. A says, larger racial and ethnic minority populations. B says, higher rates of poverty. C says, larger high and middle class populations. And D says, higher rates of crime. Now, suburbs, they tend to have larger high and middle class populations than urban centers. Urban centers, they tend to have larger low socioeconomic status populations than the suburbs. And this is due in part to the increased mobility that's seen in high and middle class populations, which permits their migration into the suburbs. And again, sometimes this happens because middle and high class populations want to get away from mixed neighborhoods, mixed socioeconomic status neighborhoods, or even just low socioeconomic status populations. The correct answer for nine is C. 10 says, which of the following terms refers to the burden or degree of disease associated with a given illness? This is just a definition question, and the answer here is going to be morbidity. This refers to the burden of illness or the severity or degree of illness. So the correct answer is A. Just as a refresher, mortality refers to deaths caused by a given illness. Second, sickness. This is a term that's used to describe the exasperation of health outcomes due to social injust injustice. And then chronic um, illnesses, this refers to the duration of a disease, not its severity or significance for the patient. So again, the correct answer here for 10 is A. 11 says, compared to white Americans, 
which of the following racial or ethnic groups tend to have a better overall health profile. So again, this is from our lecture in comparison to white Americans, Asian Americans tend to have better overall health profiles. And so the correct answer here is going to be B. African Americans, they tend to have worse overall health profiles. Hispanic Americans and Native Americans, they both have pretty mixed health profiles in comparison to white Americans. They're better off in some categories and worse off in others. Also to note here, Hispanic and Native Americans do not have better overall health profiles than white Americans. They just have mixed health profiles in comparison. So the correct answer here for 11 is going to be B, Asian Americans. Let's move on to 12. 12 says, which of the following best describes the populations targeted by Medicare and Medicaid, respectively? As a reminder, Medicare covers patients over the age of 65, so older age groups, and those with end-stage renal disease and those with ALS. Medicaid on the other hand, covers patients below a certain socioeconomic level. So we're looking for an answer choice that properly encompasses that. It's going to be answer choice C, which says Medicare, mostly patients in older age groups, Medicaid, mostly patients with low socioeconomic status. So 12 is C. Let's go ahead and move into problem 13. 13 says morbidity is increased in low income groups because of all of the following except blank. A says higher rates of obesity. B says less access to health care. C says higher rates of homicide. And D says lower rates of physical activity. Morbidity refers to the burden or severity of disease, and all of the factors listed are true with regard to low socioeconomic status populations except for high homicide rates. This, this causes increase in mortality, not morbidity. So this is just making sure you remember the proper definition of morbidity. And that means the correct answer for 13 is going to be C. Let's move on to problem 14. 14 says hypertension, high blood pressure, can be diagnosed by having two or more blood pressure readings higher than 140 over 90 on two different occasions separated by a week. Suppose that the criteria were changed to include anyone with readings higher than 130 over 80 on at least one occasion. How would this change the prevalence of diagnosed hypertension in the population? Would it increase, decrease, remain the same, or there is not enough information? If the threshold for hypertension were lowered, more individuals would, be, would, would fit the criteria for this disease. If the number of individuals with the disease increases and the population stays the same overall, there will be an increased prevalence of the disease, which would make the correct answer here for 14A. The prevalence would increase. Then last but certainly not least, 15 says, which of the following trends regarding healthcare disparities has not been documented? Not. All right. No on the not. A says females are more likely to be insured than males. This is a true statement that has been documented. B says primary care use is more likely among males than females. The opposite is true. In comparison to females, males visit primary care doctors less frequently. So this trend has not been documented. And actually B is the correct answer, but we're still going to go through the other answer choices as well. C says low income individuals have more difficulty accessing care than high income individuals. This is very much true and has been documented. And then D says LGBT individuals have more barriers to health care than heterosexuals. This is 100% true. And so the only trend regarding healthcare disparities that has not been documented is going to be answer choice B. 
And with that, we've completed the practice problem set for this chapter. I truly hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.